Hello, everyone. My name is Jia Liu, a PhD student at City University of Hong Kong School of Creative Media. On the behalf of myself and my supervisor, Dr. Rielsi, and the co-author Chao Xionglu, I'm presenting our paper, Inactive, a distance technology mediated stage for performer audience teleprints and environmental control. What is the new multimedia stage in current digitalized and distance stage? In recent years, new forms of performance have been growing, especially due to concerns about public health. These new approaches applied multimedia technologies, which allow the performance of the audience to engage even when they're not in the same location. As we know, the classical stage, like theaters for Shakespeare or musical shows, performance and the audience are close to each other. They can see each other but the interaction is only limited to applause by the audience. But today we are seeing many new stages like live streaming and the virtual performance. In a very simple way, artists could perform in their studios and the audience could watch the performance with live streaming from another location. It was very different from the traditional stage experience. So while multimedia technologies connect the remote spaces, then we have a question. How the performers and the audience connect with each other at distance? What kind of new interactions may happen between them? To address this challenge and explore the solution for remote performance, we designed Inactive, an interactive paradigm of remote performance using a robotic arm and a multimedia exhibition strategy. To better understand the impact of this approach, our study mainly focused on three research questions. First, we want to investigate how teleprints robotics affect performance perception and the use of their bodies in distance interaction. In other words, will the presence of a robot influence the performance design workflow, such as their body movements or gestures? And if the robots indeed affect the workflow of the performance, how would they adapt to it? And how would the performance adjust to the other elements of the remote performance, such as music or lighting controlled by the audience. Then we explore the dynamics of performer and audience connections and engagements. Through the project, we're trying to understand how performers would adapt to a stage and the environments that are controlled by the audience and how the audience would perceive their relationship with the performers in this distanced setting. To help understand those questions, this is how we designed Inactive. There are two separate venues as shown, one for performing and one for viewing. In the performance venue, which show on the bottom side, the performers carry out their performance in their own studios. These performances are live streaming to the exhibition venue via Zoom. The music from speakers and the lights work remotely controlled by the audience in the viewing space. And in, in another space, there is a projection of the performance on the wall and also two interactive control panels for the audience to control the lights and the music in another space. There was also a robotic arm in the center of the space. The robotic arm can be triggered by the performance body movements and the gestures in the other space. Here it is. The rules that how the robotic arm could be controlled by the performance captured movements. You can see in the first figure, like as an example, if the performer lift up his or her right hand and the robotic arm will turn to the right, as if looking at the light control panel on the right side of the wall. This movement serves as an implication for the audience as well and to tell them, look, there is a panel, maybe you can interact with the performance by it. In addition to the basic design rationale, performers may have their own design movements as well. Like in this performance, the performer lift up her cat to trick the robot. It also provides an opportunity for artists to explore remote spaces performance and a new ways of engaging with the audience. We got some findings that could help understand the impact of the project. To address the first research question, 
we have observations about how Teleprint's robot affected performance workflow. Actually, none of the five performers have privacy experience performing with the robots. So it has the difference from what they expect. But the differences seems doesn't distract the performance in their workflows. Also, it seems effective for some of the performers to engage with the audience. As shown in this video, when the audience move the plants to the camera and the performers at the other side also move to the camera and open her mouth very big, just like she's trying to eat in the plants. If without a robot arm, this kind of interactions would not be happened when the performance was not in the exhibition venue. Also, the robotic arm seems to give in an inspiration for the performer of these improvised moments. Although this innovative setup may affect the performance workflow, the performers show their strategies for engaging with the robot, music light, and the audience through their performance or detail in the interview. It helped us to investigate how their adaptations to distance performance and engagements. Most of the performers said the robot moves differently from what they thought. Something is more sensitive than imagining and some said it didn't follow the instructions that much, but they know how to sew in their performance actually. The P1 on the live image, uh, he focused a lot on interacting with the robot arm through the movements. Uh, he tried the very exaggerated body stretching and also the facial expression. Although it didn't always happen as expected, as he said, but he explored the possibilities of this remote performance. If I wish the video played on the right side, you can see she had designed movements. She also felt challenged when not calling the rule of the robot at the beginning, but it didn't constrain or affect her movements a lot because she tried to focus attention on her own performance instead of on the robot at the end. The performers also feel more visual interactions between the audience than the sound. The engagement in music almost had no effect on the performance. Although P2, P5 in the live images, you can see they adjust their movements along with the music. They still didn't think the control of music affected their performance. They just used the music as a part of their performance. But for the lights, the influence is more interesting and obvious than the music. And in the red figures, the performers react to the lights, they are control, which was controlled by the audience. I especially want to explain the uh, figure A on the right side, which was P4 setup. When the audience turned the shower lights on or off, you can see the performers change her movements. And she even has some tricky things. When the light turned up, you found she disappeared, but actually she's back at the shower. It, it was very interesting, like she created interaction with the audience by using her performative space based on what is visible and not visible to the exhibition. She also shared her feeling. Sometimes when the light turned off, she feel as if she's sharing a secret with the audience. Based on our observations, interviews with the performance and audience service, we got some insights into performance and audience perception of their engagements with, with each other in this setup. Performers perceived the audience differently through the spring than they did in classical stage, but the interactions between them emphasized the audience presence. On the left side image is P2 waving to the camera because she received the message from the audience in the viewing space. And it's really an interesting interactions. She also said that I feel less lonely during the performance. And even she was uh, performed alone in her own studio. And the P4, which we talk about the, the light interactions with her and the audience, she feel that when she look at the screen to see what the audience 
did interact with her, like to turn on or turn off the light by using the control panel. She was like watching a disjointed film. According to the audience survey, although the audience did not fully comprehend every aspect of the interactions, but they can understand the emotions or topic the performers were attempting to express. It was also interesting to know that some of the audience feel that they're not only the audience, but also the performers, because they can control the environments of performance location. The engagements enhance their perception of the presence in performance, even in separated space. And when the audience could notice that the robot arm was following the performer, and when the performers were engaged with the music and the light controlled by the audience, actually, the three elements, the robot arm, the audience, and also the performers share the same identity. They are all performers. So in active, this innovative interactive performance foster a new performer and audience relationship, providing a different perspective into the boundaries of engagements and the collaborations remote performance. In conclusion, Inactive is a new form of stage that contributes in connecting the digital distance and real physical space. It created a multimedia way of promoting performer audience interactions beyond the classical performances. Only the new identity rose between performer and the audience, led them to share the same identity. It also provides insights into how performers learn to engage with the audience in novel distance space and diverse interactive media. It also contributes to the possibilities of future visualized performative interactions beyond the classical stage metaphor. Thank you for listening to my presentation. If you have any question or would like more information, please don't hesitate to contact our studio.